whatever you are doing, like either explaining or asking questions, you are not only helping yourself, but you're also contributing to the community. And almost always, Dr. Mayim say that it is those, it's on the shoulders of those who ask and who participate that we actually make it so. And can you be that shoulder? So let's start. He's going to be the first to tell us or explain what they understood by the challenge document. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Japanese? Yep. Yes. Okay. So the basic thing of understanding is that there is a company that owns uh, this needs uh, data warehouse. So in order to uh, this LLM, it needs data warehouse. So we are building a uh, data warehouse for this uh, company that owns data warehouse for this, uh, for this company. So what, what we are doing is the LLM wants to be developed in uh, the different official languages. There is about three languages that were mentioned on the digital document. One from the Amharic language. So they want to have a data warehouse on that. So we are going to scrape it. Then we're going to have to store it in a, a, a data warehouse so that uh, this LLM could uh, use that. And we are using Airflow for the automation uh, so that the, 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 the whole process, the whole process, the whole data pipeline to be uh, autonomous. And also, uh, we are going to use uh, React for the front development so that uh, the user can filter out. Maybe the, the, the company can uh, filter out uh, some data from the data warehouse. So there is a, uh, we're going to use React for the front development. And uh, we're going to use Flask for the back development for the framework. Uh, uh, Flask, the end of the Flask API is mentioned on the document for the, uh, the back end. Uh, so uh, this is the basic thing I get from the document. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Uh, with your background, I was slightly, was not able to hear much, but whatever I heard was correct. So thanks for also volunteering despite you are in a, uh, in a background or in an area where it's actually not easy. And that shows the commitment. Thanks. Thanks, Japes. Michael? Okay. Good morning, Gabriel. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this week's project is to, it aims to enhance the natural language processing capabilities of uh, the company, Rootstake Solution, for uh, multiple African languages, uh, uh, Swahili, Amharic, and Yoruba. So first, we there is a data corpus development, I think. So we are, we are required to collect large amounts of text and audio data so to support the NLP applications for uh, many applications, like semantic search, uh, chatbot or sentiment analysis then uh, so after addressing the data scarcity we will clean and process the data so after that we will put that data in the structured database using uh, postgres or mongodb and after that we will develop api so and after that we'll come uh, we'll complete our project so uh, I think this is my understanding. So my question is, I didn't understand the task for what does an unnoted means. And the second question is, it's more of general questions like uh, the the last week project. I think there is misunderstanding. I think uh, even for myself, if, uh, uh, at least. So that was there is a big picture like finishing the project and uh, the chatbot and everything. And but the, the tools, for example. 
installing Ridge Dash took like five or four days for me at least. So, uh, so the whole purpose is it using the tools and finish the every task that's assigned to us, or is this considering the big picture and finishing the projects with like other tools? Like for example, for Ridge Dash we can use Plotly and Streamlit for my research and and other tools so which one yeah. is this which one we consider yeah. no I, th I think it's a very 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 good question thank you again so maybe just i sometimes pronounce your name as michael or uh, is it michael or michael yeah michael michael okay so i think you know the, the first question is annotation basically means like when you are gonna do some supervision supervised training you need to annotate the data to be able to allow, like for example, okay, this is, um, let's imagine just for um, entity recognition and you have to identify which are the entities, right? So you have a text and you have to identify this other text. And in, in other cases, if it's audio, you probably need to uh, annotate each audio, maybe by a uh, text or by some other, um, complex process. So annotation basically means labeling, mostly. But when it comes to text, usually, you know, either you classify if it's for classification, um, and some of the fine tuning, for example, in, in, the, in the sense of LLM, usually because they use just the next word prediction, you don't need to do it. But even for BART type uh, models where you need to actually predict, um, you know, where or what happens, and in that case, you might need supervision, like especially classification type of tasks. So annotation is basically that. I hope that answers your question in that regard. Yes. And then in the second regard, which is really very important, it is not, I mean, like imagine you're, of, of course, it's you who decides what is, but the most important part, even if it takes four days, that's a learning. And had it not been like that, life would have been easy. But in any way, when you want to do something in a certain way, it takes time, right? So it, it is not a, it's not a le le learning journey here. It's just a work experience, experience based. So in a way, yeah. Um, but if you feel like, okay, I, I think in this case, I can really, you know, yeah, like there are different mindsets and it's about optimizing what you can do in the time that you have with the skill you have and how do you increase your skill because it's, it's you know there's these two terminologies i want everyone to remember exploration and exploitation so exploration means that you are actually exploring you know fixing a bug is exploration learning the tools the new tools is exploration while exploitation is what you have already, like let's imagine, okay, now I I I, I don't want to explore now. I'm gonna more exploit. But if you just focus only on exploiting, you don't learn. If you just only build things on with the things that you know only, you don't learn. So that balance between exploitation and exploration is what is what we don't specify as much because that's nobody will specify that for you. But a almost always think of there is a boss and who asks you to do something. And still, you know, you can do whatever, the, just only the, what the boss asks. And sometimes you might just say like, okay, the boss probably wants just a bigger picture this time. And I'm going to really just deliver the bigger picture, even if I didn't do what in the way that he, the, the person, he or she asked. So, you know, which, if you keep doing that, of course, the boss will not be happy right because i mean you're just postponing you're not exploring you're not increasing you're just you're just addressing something and definitely the tech stacks you know probably are not sufficient for the company a few times is fine but every time is not does that does that give you a context it's not yeah, a so, clear so answer balancing yes or not. yeah yeah okay so balancing that too yeah is, yes. this is my understanding okay thank yes. you so yeah it's because it's job environment more than learning environment it's not as what it dictates per se okay fantastic thank you for the question and anyone else who wants to 
explain their understanding. So th there is also a part, it's a group work, right? Uh, again, it's slightly bigger groups. And we will provide um, a cloud system for this one. That means just you'll have an instance that you can work on. And you should also choose one language because working on all of them is really complex. So depending on your, your group makeup, choose one that suits best for, for the group. That means that if it's Swahili and no one speaks Swahili in that group, you know, it's, it's going to be a problem. It's the same as Yoruba or Amharic. So make sure to be able to choose, select whichever you like, but the one that makes the group more, do more, understand more, especially for annotations, finding where and search, whatever, all of that would require that. Any question and any, you know. Hi, uh, sorry, could you uh, give us more detail about the cloud? You said uh, something about the cloud. I did not hear yeah, it well. So th there is going to be an instance we will give you. So you will all have to generate a public key and you will fill a form so that you can share your public key with me and then you will have access to an instance where you can work like for example you can run your scraping there on the inst you know using basically that instance and you can store large files in s3 it's going to be at aws cloud so but you're going to have just access to an instance as a group and then you will work on that instance um, for your needs for this project Hilary? Yeah, so my question is um, at the at the last end of the group uh, group numbers, we have machine host name. Is is that for the AWS cloud? Or? Yes, exactly. So so where you, you're going to be, we're going to share like host name as just the variable and you will have to replace your host name. So it's basically just this is going to be a, an SSH config um, format that we will share and in that the host name is this one so for that group the host name is g1 so which means that you will ssh to that machine and then you will use the private key that you have the ssh private key so you will share through the form the the public key and then you will use the the private key to access okay and for that there will be i think small mini tutorial so that but the most important part is if you really want to have access, I think right after this, there will be shared um, uh, a Google form. Please fill, generate your SSH key and sh fill the form. And accordingly, if you don't do that, you don't get access, just simple. And the more it takes time for you to do it, the, the harder it is. You know, basically that for me to generate your then username again and all that, will take time and it might delay you to have access so as soon as it's shared please uh, fill the form yeah abraham uh yes and what is the purpose of that instance is it for scraping or I think uh, you can development use it. or what you, you can use it for for anything right it's it's for the whole the entire developer because this is more of it might take so long time to run jobs right and then also some of the message passing i mean it will have a better run and and therefore you will be able to use so it's much more of for your work like as a group and also just when you save data you don't have to you know it's, it's much harder for example to download data on your pc on that machine it's basically you are accessing amazon's internet right so if you have to download you know 10 gigabytes of data that's uh, it's probably gonna be harder for you like in in your home network but in the cloud it, it, it should be very fast so the most important part is 
this project again we are talking about this project the project is about for all the future projects that are coming especially in llm and and um, you know chatbots and basically all this um, development ai generative ai that the the most you're going to get stuck with will be data data to, especially when you are using in other languages like uh, african languages so it's for that reason here you are if you are in a company that i run i would really want you to do this right you have to for if we are serious then we have to we have to be able to create this data warehouse where we can add continuously to and use that as part of you know partly for our you know uh, knowledge base partly for our tokenization and, and vectorization and partly for fine tuning for a particular case for example just how to handle um, a legal case in amharic for example you know for that you need to collect lots of legal documents in amharic written maybe in amharic right so things like that or in yorba for example i don't know some some traditional um uh, cultures that are written only in that language or in swahili for example i don't know um things that are mostly written with that for example radio data or tv data for example things like that and and for that most of these for example traditional medicines in in all languages probably are written in the local language or at least i i assume so but you know i i, I don't consider that i know what i'm talking in this sense but there's definitely a lot of radio a lot of news um, are written in the language and it's about collecting them and and you, and then more than collecting it's actually also learning how much data is out there because then you will not try for example a company will ask you like okay i want you to build a, a chatbot that handles like local speakers and you will not say yes if you know now that the amount of data available is so small that it can't do much right so it really it's not only just that it also lets you know how much data is out there for your language or for the language that that you are you're going to be working with right? so it's that limit yeah anyone uh, explanation question is everything clear what is not clear as i said there are multiple layers of understanding a, a given document the very just going through the the bigger picture and then the smaller pictures you know tiny details about somewhere one word right things like that so if you understand everything then fine you know yeah uh one data one data you may you may proceed Okay, Wandera, we can't hear you if you are speaking. If not, then Michael, until Wandera managed to speak. Michael, we can, we can proceed. Okay, so uh, how can we measure our success? Like, for example, I use uh, like, I use three documents and three uh, audio file. And so at the end, what is our measure like in, in last weeks? Uh, using yeah. the chatbot and doing something so in this yeah. week what is our measure the amount of data and the quality of data so it is about of course first is the the simple like how much have you managed to automate it in a sense like how much is easy to add more data new data so that's from the data warehouse perspective it's about how much have you done how much set up um, in such a way that it's easy to add data it's easy, it's easy to fetch data but but i would say the most important part in this case is how much data is in your data data warehouse and how you know it's not just a data lake or it's called data swamp it's not just you add everything just without any thing but also that you have a stats that shows the amount of the quality data so if you can just say i have this amount of data this amount of tokens 
in in the language for example if it is uh, swahili you can say uh, based on this tokenization i have this amount of tokens in my um in my warehouse and the topics of the the data are from this 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 for example i think then the the volume then two people saying the same thing what matters will be then how much is the volume is it 1 billion 1 million tokens which means in terms of size maybe is it you know audio usually increases the the size but overall just if you compare just only text only with text only another person's work you would be like saying how much token and how much size in terms of like uh, token means size normally so it's basically is it one gigabyte or 10 gigabyte and then within that that one gigabyte 10 gigabyte how much of it is unknown just simply just a dump and how much it, how much of it's a quality that we know we can use does that make sense yes yes thank you oh. hillary yeah yes yeah, so my <clears throat> my question is, my first question is that how do you measure the speed of pipeline um that it's uh, it's just there measure the speed of pipeline which uh pipeline yeah. can consume that and okay so i have other question like um the next is like we i'm seeing the title is saying um a rg retrieval and uh, I understand that we didn't use vector databases last time. Um, do you have to use that one? And uh, yeah. I mean, the same. That, that is a good question. Again, thank you. Um, so the speed, just the speed is basically normally how much can you like imagine you are building a pipeline such that other people from many social medias can also contribute to your database. So you are facilitating data addition tools such that you know that you ask your friends to add you know to contribute data and your pipeline is just basically um, consuming them so that's why for example instead of you can use kafka but just kafka was slightly complex that's why because you have only one week so for this case uh, you are using faucet which is faust which is actually Again, very similar to Kafka, which is a message passing um, or a, a message uh, interface. That means it is a publish, sub subscribe and publish um, mode. So it's how much, of course, throughout the process, how much can you handle? You know, it's basically the concurrency of the system, right? So if so many people are putting, how much are you writing? How much are you processing? uh per per second or per time you know per some one hour it's like that's the the speed so normally the libraries themselves sometimes limit you in this case the faust is really used and in, in trillions and bi billions so maybe the library is less but more your setup your setup means you know if you are now classifying things on the fly using certain models how fast are they mo those models if you are saving them in a database, how fast are you um, uploading or saving it into the database? If you are reading from, from a certain file, how much, how fast is that? So it's so the overall speed then when you add, like you can estimate like, when will it break the, the whole pipeline? Um, by the speed means like, if it's high speed, it can really just, it can handle many concurrent requests and writes in a in a you know basically a, a lot of data at a time does that answer your question um yeah so kind of but um so it is a measure like in this case uh what i understood is that we we uh, input more data or uh, uh, and see where it may be it may break or something and uh see how it can handle that so, you know um, there, there are there are simulators so normally there are simulators who would simulate stress test. For example, Locust is, for example, one. Okay. So okay. Um, like these are basically, they simulate, they just simulate the, the amount of data being kind of inputs, just a dummy data, right? It's just the speed test of uh, an internet. 
they just simulate and send it to you and then you will measure how much can you handle and then you can just say the yeah like the consumption per per time per second the gigabyte or the megabyte of that you could actually understand um so just let me low locus i think it's not locus locus Maybe just the spelling, I made a mistake. Lotus, I think it's maybe Lotus. So it's a locus, um, for example, and there are many. So you could do this just and 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 see what are the bottlenecks. It's like the same as measuring your code, you're profiling your code and knowing which functions are the bottleneck. In this case, just the system itself from end to end, right? Okay. Okay. Thank I hope you. That 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 gives and then in terms of rag it is intentionally the interest here it's a, a chicken and egg so now you you you're collecting data such that you will be able to improve retrieval right because the embedding systems are not good normally so i am not thinking for you to vectorize everything and such but it is to improve the throughput, you know, it's to to be able to think in the future. I might do, I might want to do that. So that means once I have improved using those data, I might use those data for other reasons. For example, I might want to build on top of that a search engine. So how am I gonna design? So you're not gonna use any rag or vector database for this for now, and but it is about to think. Once I have now a data, good data, and I build on top of it, will it change my knowing that I might use this one as a knowledge base, as a knowledge knowledge base, which means in that case I need semantic retrieval, um, and, and so it's much more of like so. Another thing you have to know: why will I? I worry a lot more. Most of my time I spend on this part. The reason is these are what you are going to add in your portfolio and in your portfolio a person would only mostly look at just the title first and then the description and in the title what should be the one that reflects the knowledge that you have i know you know rag and now these are additions basically almost always you can think of these titles as additions to your portfolio in such a way that they summarize the type of experience you have including api design right high throughput data ingestion and drug retrieval and then scalable data warehouse these are key things that probably you know more people just get excited and so having that and understanding if nothing you know understanding and being able to explain the components that makes up like a scalable data warehouse a high throughput data ingestion and design for llm and a rug retrieval would provide enough meat in your portfolio. Yeah, does that? Y yes, um, it's okay. So I've, yeah. I've, so I've, I've no need I've, for vector database for now. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I have, uh, I have another question that uh, we have to use uh, the, the languages you've mentioned. So when you're doing script, this web scraping, um, yeah, mostly maybe we'll have English. So, do you only need documents that have only those things that are in the language? And also, I can see yeah. that um, in the NLP, when you are doing pre-processing, you have to remove stop words and you know, and uh, separate data table category for English text, something like that. So, yeah. um, should we should we have 
um, is the end goal to have only documents with the with the uh, specific yeah. language? With your language. I mean, of course, we we're, we're not collecting English. There's so much already in terabytes of English data. So there's it's, it defies the purpose. It is it, it is not, it has no objective to collect English data. So the 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 clear lack and the problem, the business objective we are solving is being able to have a centralized at least collect learn how much data is out there comparatively then you will compare with the smallest even english data out there and you you would make up your mind you know why why is for example you know yeah so it's a lot more of a lesson on the language that you are interested in as well so it's not about english it's just about the language that language only and the clearer, the more it's all about that language, the better it is. And English in this case is a noise. Or any other language is a noise. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And uh, one more question, huh? last yeah. one. So in yeah, that case, we need yeah. to we need to like um we need to identify the sources for yes for the question, but how do you should have a source a source table right it's like that also you capture the source yeah yeah so how do you how how do you come up with the criteria to identify the sources because there are so many yeah. that is if i know then i think i would have done it already yeah it is the problem right in a way there are normally just google search and finding the sources some people have already done that and getting those data and putting them is already there and the most important the most contribution you will do is not just to create already created data list which is by itself okay but can you identify novel areas novel places for example whatsapp whatever you know other places that you could scrape for can you create something slightly novel you know just even if it's like another one gigabyte can you add a source from a source that is not already usually you know well organized because if you are well organized it then you can give it to other people right or you can use it in the next time so it's it's exactly that that part it's about knowing and learning and finding being a strategist in that sense so it's a big project in a small amount of time and and the reason is it is it's about it's more than a very depth of it. It's much more of the overall picture. I mean, in this case, I mean, Michael, you ask it, but it's much more of like, you really learn a lot of details about the data because a lot of the next weeks, you're gonna do a lot more LLM. And for that, having this understanding is key, but also the skills necessary in setting up and thinking scalable data warehouse and API design uh, for that is key. Um, so that's why it's broad here. OK. Great. Michael. OK. Uh, I have a question. The first one is I, I think we need two databases for the for storing raw data and to store the clean data. So why, why do we need two databases? And the second one is to to clean the the text files like we use uh, we we remove the punctuation we normalize white space we, we we remove the html tags and special characters so my question is for the audio what is cleaning the audio data means if you if you can explain that thank you yeah, there are there are a lot of noise and signal and uh like audio just in general it's like you could you could for example try to separate the background from the foreground which means early in the audio you might get the background and then somebody starts speaking so you could uh, do that you could also just cut most of the just silent places where there is nothing happening only noise and and a number of things like that but also alignment for example if you have if or like if you get some audio like, like for example if you have a songs database you know the the lyrics you can align them so that's again another alignment just where uh, annotating in that case so i think there's a lot more audio processing 
to increase the quality is um, is by itself a big big area. But all you you do mostly is to be able to amplify the signal and to remove filter out the. So in that sense, you might do, you know, uh, decomposition Fourier transform of the audio such that you can um, um, you can apply high pass filters to remove some things, things like that. You know? There are a lot like in that area you can explore. But again, as I said, it's one week, so a lot more of is just a team, just one person in, in the in the group should be just asked. Otherwise, if everyone is working on it, it might be a bit complex. Does that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And the data switch. Yes. So um, again, I think you know scalable data warehouse. You don't just build just because you have a database. You don't. You can't call it just a warehouse, right? You need also a, a data engineering framework. I think you have already get introduced um, to how database design works, in particular data warehouse or data lakes. In this sense, you are, if you, for example, I think we, there will be probably a tutorial, if not maybe conversation in the Q&A, like there are frameworks like Kedro, for example, is one framework where it's about it's it's much more of a structuring just your data in such a way that it's manageable. So in Kedro, Kedro framework, for example, you have seven layers, and each layer represents the the data, the stage, the level of the you know the data life cycle. As it comes, as it gets extracted from the source, it becomes in the raw layer. So that means you have to keep the raw layer in the just in a folder, for example, as just the data layer. And the second part is standardizing that data. So that's called intermediate layer. Intermediate layer, you might convert that data into parquets or other formats where they actually store both the type of the data, the column, for example, and um, the the so the file, so that it has its typed or standardized. And the third one, maybe you apply your first transformations or your first kind of like in this case, you decompose them into multiple tables and you add them either in a SQL or no SQL. Database, and then from that on, as you process, for example, you do EDA, and you kind of clean something. That one you can do it on on the uh, primary, and like that, it goes on and goes on. And if you have now a clean data for that, you can, you just can use for machine learning. Then you put that one as another layer. So it is that process. So basically, the framework is one, but within that. You may use just a simple storage, or you may use and, and and for one layer, for another layer, you may use just a certain database. For another layer, you may use another database. It is about not just using Postgres or MongoDB only, but it what what fits your design. It's a slightly more. It's not written most of what I have said, so maybe we will rephrase it. But is that understandable? Yeah, so instead of putting in one layer, like making many layers and put such up. that exactly as the data it changes its life cycle, and you you basically put it, and for that you may you you will have a specific storage, either a relational database, no relation, or just a normal um, basically object store. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Hilary, is it another question? Yes. Um, so, yeah. uh, oh, you mentioned about uh, Kaf, um, Faust, um, uh, like uh, a different version or um, alternative to Kafka. But I'm um, seeing that Faust, uh, you need Kafka for that. You need to you need to to use Faust, uh, Kafka for Faust. Okay. So I will I will check. I mean, I, I will be honest. I I know mostly Kafka, but then it's the setup could be slightly trickier but yeah if, if it requires then i think you probably have to use them kafka or maybe rabbit mq just on another smaller ones that are easy to work with for now given the resources and the time so we will i will yeah thanks for pointing that out i mean i was just checking that and i saw that 
it need it uses Kafka broker, but also I assumed it has its own broker. But if it doesn't have its own broker, um, then in that case we will update on that. Okay, so um, so essence is uh, just to use a message 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 broker here. Um, yes, the essence right? is that you use yeah you facilitate uh, basically a high throughput message passing because. As I said, when you are building scalable things, you need to understand what it means um, concurrency, and you need to understand what it means like, to to handle as message pass because as as messages come from different uh, you know publishers, in this case just your data sources, you you will not have infinite computational power to to process them as they come. You need to have a, a reliable way of basically storing the message and processing them, passing them. Right? That's why it's called message passing, or basically sub publish and subscribe model. And and there are many, um, including maybe just uh, I mean again, cloud learning will be just will take another its own. That's why we are not gonna use SQS. Amazon has its own um sqs and sns so these are basically another just types um but let's we yeah, the essence is just to use one which stores some you know which takes which basically removes the the stress from your system and reliably and without loss it stores your message and delivers them it's basically and that's what you need you know rabbit mq or Many other uh, like Python based only libraries, uh, or just basically industry level, industry grade systems like uh, Kafka. Okay. And is it clear or is anyone getting confused? Abdurrahman? Uh, hi, Abdul. Hi. Uh, it's. Uh... I'm I'm kind of confused now. So yeah. What? What is the final uh, project should look like? Uh, the front end and this part. Mm. Yeah. So the final part is so. Let's forget for now the front end. So the the front end is one piece where it, it helps it's basically is like an admin dashboard right it allows you to both the client dashboard and admin dashboard that allows you to control what is in your database you know you know gives us some statistics it's a monitoring dashboard more or less and sometimes if you want to add data or delete data maybe or archive data it, it helps you to do that let's let's for now just that that nice to have management let's for for now you know put it aside the key point point is first is collecting a lot of data and organizing them in a in a structured way such that we can reuse them that's key that that's the most basic for this project and understanding what makes a scalable you know what what, what makes the components of scalable data warehouse and what is a data model and what are the tech stacks in this in this tech you know in this scalable data warehouse and when even if we just say a data warehouse it's normally this place it means a data warehouse that's built on top of data lake so understanding you know what that data you know that relationship so it is just that a sense is that and to be able to load as much and to pass as much data from different sources and to handle them reliably and uh, that's the final product and then on top of that if you because it's a group work we also think that there are going to be some people who are probably can can save some time to build that dashboard you know that easy to manage you know your data warehouse is managed from that dashboard does that is that does that clarify abdraman yeah yeah it's clear now thank you great then anyone else any question Hilary again. Yeah. So, um, in 
uh, in the web scraping you mentioned we use scrapy beautiful soup and uh and selenium so do you use each of those or um should they I, mean, no. I think it's okay. much more of a suggestion it's much more of whichever tool you use but just these are these are tools that you could use there might be more there might be you might just want to prefer one you might not say lenium if if you if the if you can just have api but for some of them that you need to actually pretend they are a human you need to use selenium. so it's a, it's it's much more of like you you choose appropriately and if you don't need it you don't need it yeah does that address your question yeah that's clear thank you okay. and michael yeah no there is a question in the message box i think you didn't yeah, see it didn't. okay uh coding jedi okay i want to ask if the data we are collecting would be from a website to our choosing yeah, yeah. i mean absolutely choose from anywhere it's 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 it is, you're not creating just one data, you know, don't think of it just like as one data. It's going to be like whatever you can find in that language. And that that could be categorized, right? So even if just it's a text on legal, on medical, on education, on, uh, I don't know, like social, entertainment, comedy, music, art, books. It's about that. It's collecting as much as you can. How much can you collect on that on that language? That's the question. So I hope that answers your question, coding. Okay. So I think is there any section that you want me to explain? And we can have a conversation tomorrow again, just a quick conversation on what are questions remaining. But if not, then I will stop here. Yeah, Henok, but you can ask as much question as possible. Henok, go uh, ahead. Should I go ahead? Uh, uh, just uh, from my understanding, so from yeah, the go. collection part, is there like uh, a mi like a minimum requirement like for the system to work like different uh, different amounts of uh, you know different sizes of uh, data right uh, so like is there like a minimum yeah. amount that would work or is there like a maximum amount that would just be like too much to handle I, I don't think they're, especially, you know, if you're collecting audio, you might, but if you're collecting text, let us break it and then let's worry. There's no, the, the minimum is basically just being your effort. You know, if you don't do anything, it's zero. If you do just only whatever is available, for example, just by searching, you know, Amharic data sets, um, for LLM or something, then you get data and then you load it. So that's the minimum. Again, it's yeah, I don't know. It's like as a it's a it's a lot more of it's a lot more of a challenge. How much is out there? And you say like you one group might say is like okay in Amharic, you can you guys can share data. It's nothing got to do, it's about it's about doing the work, not about like per group, but we are dividing it per group so that, so if someone, for example, if there are two groups working on your bar, for example, and they want to share data, fine, right? Not fine, it's actually encouraged. I don't want, the, the most important part ultimately is going to be, can we build one database or one data set for this language that are, that we can use later throughout the training, for example, and, and, and just, how much is out there in terms of text of that lost language text data sets and how good are they is the question henok does that i haven't answered your question directly but yeah but you get the point okay 
¿Ya ves? ¿Ya ves? Ok. Uh, my question is uh, on the structuring of the data. Is there, uh, how are we going to maybe a suggestion on uh, how are we what? How are we going to structure the data? If you can hear me. How are we gonna? I, I didn't get the structure the data. Structure the data. Capture. Structure. But structure the data. Ah, structure. Ah, yeah. Earlier, as I was saying, you you will need normally when you think of this kind of things, you need to use a model, like uh, basically a data warehouse model. What kind of data warehouse model are you using? That means how do you structure the data? Um, so one part is, of course, just as I said, Kedro framework you can use. And then within even Kedro, what are you going to, you know, like if, for example, now you're going to put some clean or semi-clean data in a database, you know, what is your data schema will be? Because all you need, so you probably will have one table, for example, that are just metadata uh, that shows where the data comes from and the size it came from, things like that, just metadata about it and then uh and then the topic whatever whatever and then the other one is uh more about just that data being separated such that it is for example i don't know uh one file for one topic it could be or you choose i mean because this is going to be a very variety data there's not going to be one structure you choose but the most you want it you want to make it homogeneous so that with the simplest model you can handle multiple cases right so for example okay i'm going to divide this and that maybe just i'm going to only have like when it's written i might capture or maybe i don't care about the time that it was written but if i have of course the time it's written i i can do some other thing as well but you, for the time you just decide that's why in the the first part is choosing architecture right so you have to choose the tech stack and your architecture you know you and then again you know what what's gonna what kind of architecture are you gonna plan within your group and define and as you build you will you will you will update that one but at least have a clear idea as like okay you know at first let's collect enough data put it uh, accordingly and then let's define our you know data structure but we're gonna probably use kedro if i don't understand kedro i'm gonna ask about kedro or I'm going to search about alternatives to Kedro and, and others, like Data Vault um, and other structures. And then I will, you know, then I will follow that. It's about really choosing that data structure itself is a choice. I mean, you have to, you have to make. Is that, is that clear? Yes, thank you. Okay. And Dereji? Okay, so, yeah. Um... I'm asking on. Uh, we can't hear you. Can you? Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay, so on collection of data sets, so we are going to collect both text as well as audio, right? So is yeah. those. I, I, is I would say focus more, exactly. The time, I mean, audio is just, yeah, I think it's that. But the more I think about it, unless in your group you divide text and audio, if you're, it, it, they, they may come from a different sources. So yeah, but text and audio, and you store them as well. Some of them, if, if, if an audio has transcription, then you store them as both. But if it's just audio, it doesn't have a transcription, you save it as audio and text as text. Okay, but proceed. Okay, so yeah, you already just answered. So, so the collected data should be it shouldn't be the same but if it shouldn't be same or much right for example the if if we get the audio is match with text well so so we just store on on one place and uh, and then if you are if you are get separate only audio so we also just store in a separate one right Yes. So I would say you, you will have three separate categories at least. One is audio only, which means it doesn't have any either label or title or anything for 
title, whatever, let's call it metadata, but it doesn't have any text associated to it or transcription associated to it about the content. Uh, it has only just metadata. And the other one is text only. That means it's just lots of texts, you know, PDFs and others and words and JSON and this and that. And the other one, I think you can, in principle, um, you can, it's it's harder to know image data sets, but image, only images are infinite, but image with, for example, handwritten and others for that language, you can consider them to be as part of text as, as well, because multimodal means you might need it. But okay, let, let's ignore, I, I know that I'm uh, this kind of confusing some people, but and you all have three, one is text only, audio with audio only and then audio with text the audio with text means some transcriptions that means the content is transcribed and you have some even if it has alignment issue it has it has a, a text equivalent for example a news uh that is written also as well as for example was read in radio you know by uh, basically in audio so those ones will will fall under one category so three categories Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? If anything, anything that is. So the, the point is really you are just gonna wear your data engineering hats this week. You're gonna be thinking like data engineer, you're gonna be searching like data engineer, and you're gonna be using tech stacks of data engineering. And data engineering tech stacks involves also some machine learning sometimes just for pure for example classification quality checks and there are a number of areas you can explore so explore that you know what is how do you build scalable data warehouse what is a data model for a scalable data warehouse what is a modern data warehouse you can search all these things and then you can say like how do i handle concurrent uh, data ingestion and how can i plan for data sets preparation for LLM fine tuning. All of that in the title, you can search and gate, and then for that language, you know, you can identify and then create the lists. Already the list already will help you. If you can estimate how much is out there that can be collected, it's already a big win. Okay. So, I hope it's clear. And um, for anything else, we can have a Q&A as well, just on this. But I hope that you are excited. And um, yeah, something we will know by the end of this week, how much is out there to be collected. And especially if we could put it in terms of numbers, like how many tokens can we of Amharic or Swahili is out there? that you know normally if you hear like just a simple llama three whatever what are they are trained for trillions of tokens and now can we collect even you know do we have one billion what does it take to go from one billion to ten billion token you know then you start really understanding the value of what it means data so this is really a good a good uh, checkup before you start exploring the LLM world. Maybe with that. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, I think uh, I was already done. I think it's just uh, the internet interrupted for a few seconds. But so that's it. And I hope that you are excited. So let's continue. And then Academy team, let's stop recording.